All right, I know what you guys are thinking. Keith, you've already done a video like this in the past, and you're absolutely right. We did do a video in the past where we showed how you could increase the performance of the Polaris GPUs by reducing the voltages, but this time we're specifically looking at basically just reducing power limit while maintaining these performance numbers. Now, I'm gonna use the superposition benchmark as kind of our, what we're gonna to use to showcase the differences here, but this time, unlike the last go around where I just documented, I'm gonna actually show you guys on this right here, this, uh, kilowatt from the wall just what kind of performance numbers we're getting now this is the uh, sapphire nitro plus rx 570 and what we're going to do first i'm going to show you how to do it so you're going to obviously go into amd radeon settings um we're going to go ahead and maximize these just so it's easier to see go to gaming global settings global watt man and now see right now everything is on auto and the temperature is up a little bit higher because I'm running dual outputs to the capture device as well as the monitor so that's why those are a little bit higher and of course the idle fans they don't kick on till a little bit later but uh, back to the point here so 1750 on the memory uh, power limit we're not actually gonna have to adjust this this go around and the last time I showed you how to adjust the power limit all we're gonna do this time around is focus on not even the the frequency I've got it in silent mode which is a lot be better for this because I'm going for efficiency this go around now moving over to the voltage control that's where the magic's gonna happen you see here it's dialed in at the top three power states P state 5 6 and 7 at 1150 millivolts interestingly enough um, I've already done the numbers so there's uh, th we're not gonna go through the actual process so what, you, what, what you'll do is you'll do like uh, 1140 uh, 1140, 11.4. You, you're going to want to take the top three power states down as low as you can get them. Now, I actually found for all of these down to P state three, down to 10.20 is um, actually extremely stable. I can get down to one volt on here, but 1.02 uh, volts or one. 10, 20 millivolts. It's actually kind of the sweet spot for this. So once you dial these in, you're going to hit apply. Now what we're going to do is back out of here and I'm just going to be quiet and I'm going to let the benchmark run superposition. We'll have a side by side comparison of stock versus undervolted to see just how much of a benefit that we get in the real world. All right, so let's jump back in there after the conclusion and talk about that one.
Well, as we wrap this one up off of our test bench, this is again our X99 uh, i7-6800K test bench here at 4.1 gigahertz. Just kind of important for performance uh, power draw numbers anyway. You can clearly see that there is a reduction in power as well as temperatures, which is a nice thing to see. Kind of makes you wish they had not gone quite so aggressive on the voltages here. And in the end, the performance numbers, again, just like with the 480 uh, back in the day, this one actually performed better when undervolted. It actually came in at 73.15 total score versus 72.98. Now, I know it's a small number and everything, but it, it is a variation. It's important to note that. But this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. If you found this video informative or entertaining in the least, feel free to like and subscribe, and we will catch you guys all in the next video.